So I had this like um, last minute interesting little sushi gig. Um, talking to this guy for weeks. He's uh, I didn't know what exactly he wanted, but he's like offering a lot of money, like thirty bucks an hour for sushi chefs to come and uh, you know work. So I tried to follow up on it, but he's kind of flaky. He didn't really follow up on me. He's probably just busy. But either way, he calls me like at the last minute, uh, 12 hours before I was supposed to be there. You know, and he's like, you ready? It's like, what? Uh, sure. Didn't really know what it was. He didn't really tell me too much about it. But he comes, he came and got me. My car's in the shop. He came and got me and uh, drove me up to the place. And he's not actually a sushi chef. He's just like, the owner of this company. I can't really say their name, but uh, basically he, uh, on the way, you know, this guy has a lot of money. He's a nice fucking car, like, you know, offering $30 an hour, which is pretty high, to tell you the truth. Uh, he comes up, well, why, why, he picked me up, we're driving there. Like, mind you, I only had 12 hours worth of notice, and I'm like in, 40, 40 minutes away from my house in San Diego, and he only so I'm staying. I was staying with my girlfriend for a few days, uh, Maisie. Um, <laughs> so when he called me, I was at her house. And it was like fuck, like you know, it's this. It's not like I can just like go back home like that easily. So, anyway, I like my knives were at my house where I live in San Diego, close to downtown, and the dude was just like. Uh, Got my knives, you know, I made it. It was fucking early for me, especially with that drive. I had to get up, like, for me, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock is early. I usually don't even think about getting out of bed till about 11. So, but we made it, got here, picked me up, and uh, <laughs> he starts saying, he's like, yeah, so uh, we're actually filming a reality show, a cooking show. And he's like, you're cool being on camera, right? You don't mind? You know, uh, we're going to have two teams. You're going to be with my main guy, the executive chef of this company. And we're going to be squaring off against these guys from Happy Sushi and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was like, dude, you gave me like 12 hours notice. And then you now you're telling me I'm going to be on TV. I said, dude, I... I if you would have told me, I would have cleaned up, you know. I mean, I've been at my girl's house for, you know, three days. Uh, and, you know, I haven't shaven, you know. You know, I'm a little disheveled. I just thought this was just like, you know, bang, go in there, make some sushi and leave. He's like, it is. It's bang, go, make some sushi and leave. But there's going to be camera crews on you. And we're filming this for a reality show that's going to be aired on the Food Network and, and or Bravo. He's gotten offers from both of those. So I had to say, I was like, I'm, I'm cool. I said, I'm cool. I just wish you would have given me a chance. I wish you would have let me know, one, more in advance, and two, let me know I was going to be on TV so I could get cleaned up a little bit better. And he was like, no, no, no. He's like, there's a reason I didn't do that. It's because I want people to see a real chef, not some pretty boy or Hollywood type. I want somebody to see what a real chef looks like and what it's really like. So you're slightly disheveled hungover look is what real chefs typically look like i said yeah 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 i said hey, i get it i get it it just you know he's like all right we'll get in there and do your job and um it was pretty cool i mean it's kind of hard to work when there's like camera crews like crawling up your ass you know and they were all over me they were all there everybody but you know so it's hard to work when somebody with a camera like this close to your face and like looking at your shit. It's kind of like, it's awkward. I mean, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. It's just that much more challenging. Not to mention that we were serving 120 people and they had like rounds and it's like team one against team two. I was on team one with this particular company with the executive chef. Team two was the guys that worked at the sushi bar. Okay, well, this is a couple... Um, things that are not in our favor. One was that I've never been to the sushi bar. Okay. Uh, I don't know where anything is. It's not set up. And the sushi bar only holds three chefs. Like it has three stations. 
but I'm the fourth chef and like the, the executive chef on my team, of course he gets his own station. And then the two guys that work there, of course they each get their own station. So I had like this little baby cutting board and I had to set it on top of this like fucking broke, broke dick refrigerator that doesn't even work. And try to make my sushi so I kept run back to the case, get shit, run back, because it wasn't any room for me to set up my ingredients and stuff. So uh, that really hurt my speed. But um, <laughs> uh, there was like one, two, three, one, two, three. There were three rounds, and there was 120 people there, and they said like, you know, this is Chef Zach, this is Chef Number One, and then they brought out all my food. And, you know, we had somewhat creative control. There were some things that, you know, we were just supposed to make that's just universal. All chefs did that. But then they gave us creative control over to make, um, first thing they wanted me, us to make was pokey. This was the first, like, one that they gave us creative control over. But we had to make it for 120 people. Now, although I'm a fairly good sushi chef, I'm not, it's one thing, where I work now, it's like, I, I we have, like, anywhere from four to 700 people coming in a night. I make sushi for a lot of people, but they don't all come at once. So when they all come at once, it was uh, a little nerve wracking and we're being timed and we're on camera. So it's like, we need 90 pieces of nigiri, which nigiri, if you're not a sushi fan, it's just basically what you think of when you sushi, it's just fish on a little ball of rice, right? It's not hard to make at all, but 90 of them and you're timed and you have to do it in under a certain amount of time it was difficult that was challenging i've never had to make that much nigiri at one time um, i'm sure i've made thousands throughout my career but not at one time i've never made 90 that was very challenging that's this is like a factory now and uh did that but we weren't being judged on that what we were being judged on is this dish called pokey and that's a very generic term. It basically means raw fish, and then there's other stuff in it. It's kind of like a salad, basically. Um, I, I I made mine, and I thought it was good. The executive chef, who was my uh, my team, who was basically you know my boss. I was pretty much like the assistant, but he gave me creative control. He liked it, but I didn't make enough. We weren't prepared for that much, and so like instead of making ninety samples they're like little you know little condiment cups little plastic ones like two ounce cups instead of making 90 of those i only made like 55 and i was I, out and so then i had to take because like we have to get 90 so i had to put all my shit back in the bowl and then the tuna this is another thing that fucked us is the the restaurant that we were competing against they're responsible for prepping you know um and we like ran out of tuna and so, like, now I have frozen tuna, but I've already made, you know, the tuna pokey. And it, it was fine. I liked it. He liked it. We thought it was good. We had, it was basically tuna, uh, sliced mango, cucumber, little avocado, uh, onion, and uh, I think that was it. Oh, and a special sauce, a ponzu sauce. Uh, specials, ponzu sauce, spicy. But yeah. So he's like, fuck, because we're on a timer. So we had, he's just like dicing up tomatoes and onions and just throwing it in there. And then I got to remix everything and redo it. And uh, yeah, so like it was crazy because everybody voted like on, you know, because all four chefs brought out their pokey and all the 120 people or so uh, sampled it. And um, like everybody voted like, hey, do you like chef number one, Jose? And you know, some people raised their hands. Yeah. And they counted and tallied it up. Like, hey, you like chef number two, Zach? And, like, not a single person raised their hand. And, honestly, after we remixed the ingredients, I tasted it. I'm like, this this is garbage. He's like, yeah, but we are we don't have time to, to redo this. We don't even have the fish to redo it. So we're just going to send it out. And it was funny. It was like this, like, few seconds of silence. And there's, like, this laughter. And I'm just like, ha, fuck you guys, too. Uh, I didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. But I made it. I made. I made some joke. Like, ah, thanks for voting. You know, something like that. Um, we did uh, rolls, and uh, we had to make a lot of rolls in a short amount of time. I did okay on that one. Uh, then we did sashimi, and the sashimi I did uh, yellowtail sashimi, 
with diced jalapenos, with olive oil, and a ponzu sauce with a little bit of masago. Uh, I won the sashimi contest. I failed the pokey contest with not at one vote, but the sashimi contest I won. Overall, team one, which was me, and team two, well, me and my, my the executive chef, and then team two, which was the two chefs that actually worked the restaurant we were at, they actually end up winning the event. But just by a few votes, like it was like, I think they tallied up almost 400 votes between like three, four different things or whatever. And uh, uh, we only lost by like 20. It was really close. It was really close. But uh, it was a fun experience. I mean, the guy paid me a lot. You know, uh, it's going to be aired again on uh, Food Network and or Bravo, he says. So you got two offers, financial offers. He's building up more episodes so that he can try to get more money is what he's saying he's doing. So, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's cool to be on TV again. But just like Comedy Central, when I was on Comedy Central, 90% of what is said and what you say gets cut to the floor and never actually makes it to uh, TV because of the editing and stuff like that. A lot of cool stuff. They never asked me anything, like, personal. Um, when I made something, I'd come out there and I'd present my dish and I'd tell them what it is. Like, you know, this roll is a spicy crab, asparagus, cucumber, avocado inside, and it's topped with spicy tuna with a special sauce on top that's secret that I can't tell you. That was my roll. That place number either two or three, I don't remember. But either way, um, it was fun. It was interesting. Uh, I'm going to do it again. Uh, we challenged them to a rematch, which is awesome because he said he was going to pay me $30 an hour. He actually paid me 50 uh, for being a good sport. And he says that I'm good on camera and stuff like that. And he liked the fact that I was interacting with everybody. And the head chef that I was working with told him that out of the, the, this is the fourth or fifth episode they filmed, so that this guy is the only guy that I like so far. So he gave me a little bit of extra money. Which was cool. Any Bobby beers, Bobby dinner. Yeah, you know, all around it was a really good experience. It was very different. Um, you know, it's one thing like to be talking about Satanism or something like that. Cooking's a little different just because I don't know. I oh, so I had to edit part of this video because I got interrupted just like that. But I'm not gonna do this again. So at the end of the show, <clears throat> it shows us all walking in together. Um, a company that I work for, which I really don't. I'm just, I'm just a hitman for hire. Just for enough money, I'll show up and do whatever you want. Well, within reason, of course. Uh -huh. But he's like, yeah, let's walk in all together, representing the company, you know, and walk in the door. The cameraman's are there filming. I was like, yeah, throw up, like, you know, do something, you know, with your hands, you know, we'll kind of make it, you know, animate. I was like, all right. So when I walk in, I'm the, I'm the third guy, the last, but, you know, you'll see it. I'll post it when, uh, or link it or whatever when it airs. But when I walked by the camera, I was like, you know, and it shows, and I made sure that they saw my tattoos, you know, and they give it. So, it's kind of cool. I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know when it airs. Um, but yeah, it will be on TV. I mean, this was a pretty it wasn't like a motion movie picture, but it was it was a real thing. I mean, these are real camera guys with high quality cameras, and you know, the, the actual cooking probably took like two to three hours. But fuck, we were there for like six or seven hours. You know, um, again, they never get really personal, but. Um, but you know, you, you get to see me and they just refer to me as chef Zach, which I am called Zach. That's my name and I am a chef. So you can, kind of, you know, but, oh, I, I, I made uh, very clear and the cameraman was all interested in my tattoos, which, you know, most of them have to do the same as them, you know? And, uh, so yeah, he was all up on my shit, you know, like looking at my tattoos, you can see him zooming up. So they're going to get all that stuff in there unless they cut it out, but I'm pretty sure they will. So. I'll let you know uh, when it hits. It's, he said it's probably not going to hit for a few months. So 